Hi everybody, Father Jim here, the masked priest. I just want to encourage everybody to keep wearing them. I, I don't like them. I think they're very uncomfortable. <clears throat> but it's a minor thing compared to what uh, we're protecting ourselves from. Bishop Bambera had a wonderful message today on his latest video. And he talked about how um, the mask wearing and all the other things we have to do are protecting ourselves, certainly, but also everybody else. And we have to be concerned about other, other people as well. Uh, that's what Jesus told us in so many so many ways. So we have to continue to, to do that, and maybe someday we can get back to normal, some kind of norm, normality, and uh, not have to wear them anymore. But right now, it's really, really important to do that. We made a couple uh, decisions this week. You know, our <clears throat> uh, first communion was scheduled, is scheduled for August the 1st. But we began to realize that um, if we have our this is our first communion class. All these little kids come with their parents. The church will be filled, you know, for our 75, 70 people that can be in there at any one time. And I got notice from some of the grandparents <clears throat> whom I know, wonderful people, and they just want to be there for their grandchild's first communion. And that is totally understandable. I'm glad they, want, they, glad they feel that way. So what we decided to do... <clears throat> is they have two, two First Communion classes. We're gonna do one on August the 1st, and that'll be at 10 o'clock in the morning, it's a Saturday, and the other one will be on August the 8th, which will be another Saturday, the following Saturday at 12.30. And because um, we are going to divide the class up, uh, they can each have more, more people with them, especially grandparents and godparents and all that, but there'll still be some restrictions. We can't go over 70 people. But uh, I think it'll be a wonderful day for, for all of our little, our little ones who have been waiting so patiently to receive their first Holy Communion uh, on, on these days. Uh, so we're going, to, we're going to be doing that. Anyway, just so you know, um, another thing I'd like to address is, you know, when we first had our churches opened, <clears throat> we were restricted the first weekend to 25 people, which was really a small amount. But then now, now we have 25% of our seating capacity which means we can have about 70 people at all the masses. And um, people who wanted to be included in, in that were sent in ballots. Maybe many of you did that, and we've been drawing them. And we go, when, when all the ballots are drawn, we put them all back in again so you have another chance at it until all this, this is over. But I just want to say, if you didn't send in a ballot and you'd like to be included, just send us one. Just send a little piece of paper with your name and telephone number and you'll be included in that as well. <clears throat> then you will get a call if you have been chosen as one of the one of the 70 people. So it's a, it's a good way to begin this whole process and quite frankly it's been going pretty well. People have been under, very understanding and very patient and we uh, we like that. So please do that if you can. The other thing we're um, we haven't really made any decisions yet about confirmation. We also have I think 25 eighth graders who have not been confirmed. Confirmation was scheduled for Pentecost Sunday. And of course, all that's been postponed. So we're going to come, once we do First Communion, we will then start working on the confirmation class. And it's very possible we'll have to have two, two sessions for that as well, because each confirmation student has to have a sponsor, which would be like 50 people already. And then, um, Parents, so we maybe we need to divide the class up, but these are the things we're we're trying to we're trying to figure out. So we will certainly do that. And um, I'd also like to say uh, this this past Monday I had a very wonderful experience at my first mass at Our Lady of Mount Carmel, and Father Alco had a Wednesday evening. I'm sorry, Wednesday morning, and uh, Father Sean will have one on Friday. And Father Alco, I saw him this morning after the mass and. His experience at Our Lady of Mount Carmel was the same as mine. Wonderful parish, wonderful people, uh, very welcoming and understanding. Uh, I know the parishioners of, of Our Lady of Mount Carmel are going through a, a little bit of a change, big change with not having a permanent pastor assigned to their parish. And, uh, but I'd like to say, get ready. That's the way that, that's the way it's going to be for the next many, many years, probably, probably most of our lifetimes because the, Diocese bishop does not have a uh, 
the priest to give smaller parishes a full-time pastor. So uh, that's the way it's going to be. But I think it's going to work out. And I want to, I want to uh, address some of the rumors I've been hearing, uh, you know, how rumors get started. They say if there, if there are no rumors in a town, the town would have absolute silence. But uh, we'll, we'll think about that one. But uh, Our Lady of Mount Carmel is not being consolidated with St. Faustina Parish. Our Lady of Mount Carmel will continue as a separate independent parish with its own books, its own finances. And my job as administrator is to sign the checks for the parish, for the expenses and so forth. But it's an independent parish. Nothing going to change as far as that goes. And the second thing is, it's not being scheduled to be closed. Uh, we don't know what the future is going to be. No one does. But uh, Bishop Bambera is trying to make the commitment that he does not want to close any more parishes. Now, as the priest shortage gets more and more severe, and it will, uh, you know, we don't know what's going to happen. But his, his goal is not to do that. And he keeps telling us to tell everybody that this is not another call to holiness and mission. You know, when we had the consolidations of parishes and closing of parishes, it is not that. It's trying to, what he's trying to do is take the priests that he has available and use them in creative ways and and, and have them share ministries in different parishes. But at, at Lady Mount Carmel, actually, there will be three priests serving that parish. It'll be me, of course, and Father Alco and Father Sean will be uh, having the very masses, so the mass schedule will not change except for one one change, and that is the uh, Saturday night at 5 o'clock will have to be at 5.30 because uh, Father Alco, who is going to cover there once in a while, if, if not, neither one of us is available for a Saturday night Mass, he has a Mass with Father Paisley at 4 o'clock, and so he can never make it to Our Lady Mount Carmel by 5, but he can make it by 5.30, so if we can just kind of accommodate him in that respect, but other than that, uh, we hope the whole spiritual life and the community life of, of the parish will continue with, with, with hopefully no changes. So it's a, it's a difficult time for everybody, but I think if we are, are all cooperating and understanding and trying to do the best we can, uh, this whole thing will continue in, in a good way. And we, Lady of Mount Carmel and St. Faustina, two separate parishes sharing clergy. And that's what we're going to be doing. So anyway, uh, thank you for, for listening again. Uh, I hope you got something out of this. And we are, we are trying to do our best to get, uh, get through all of this. We know that kind of makes me annoyed in the sense that there's some people in different parts of the country who are ignoring all of this. And, and what they're doing is allowing the virus to continue. And I know, I know it's a sacrifice. And, but boy, it's too dangerous not to do it. So if this is all it takes to help, that's not asking very much. So I know that I see, as I drive around town, I see so many people wearing the masks. I'm very grateful for that. So thank you again, and um, we'll see you next week. And I'm going to put on my mask and then give you a blessing. So we ask God's blessing upon you for a safe week, a week filled with the grace of God. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless.